This is Defenders TV Podcast, episode 100, where we're looking at Iron Fist, season 1, episode 11, Lead Horse Back to Stable. Welcome back fellow Defenders, this is Chris here with, we are here on Defenders TV Podcast, episode 100, 100 gentlemen, <laughs> Absolutely, I know. We did it, two and a bit years, uh -huh. a lot of strange, a lot of Defenders, a lot of... Agent Carter, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, a bit of Agent Carter in yeah. there as well. Uh, um, let's not yeah. bring up the, 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 the tearful reminder. Of Agent Carter. Uh, I, I know, I know. But uh, yeah, wonderful, uh, a wonderful hundred episodes that we've done so far. Loads and loads of MCU to cover and loads, loads more to come. Absolutely. Like, I'm absolutely amazed that we've still got The Defenders, there's mm -hmm. Daredevil Season 3, there's The Punisher, there's Jessica Jones Season 2, there's probably Luke Cage and Iron Fist Season 2s yeah, as yeah. well. Plus the continuation of the MCU into its third phase. That's right. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy coming really soon. We've got Spider Man, part I, of the Marvel uh, Universe. Absolutely. I was so afraid you were going to leave that end. No, don't you worry. Like, <laughs> the biggest one. He's don't here. you be worried? Yeah, don't with worry. all roads leading to Doctor Strange number two. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything leads back to Strange. Oh God, why did we do that? But anyway, I think the, one of the core reasons we're here, mm -hmm. obviously if this is where we're looking at Iron Fist season one, episode 11, lead horse back to stable. That's Yay. right. But we also have asked all of you good fellow defenders to send in your, basically your voicemails yeah. to tell us what you've thought about our 100 episodes please remember to be gentle absolutely <laughs> and to to celebrate with us um on this this special moment and if you don't remember who we are yeah I, i'm chris i'm john hello and i'm derek and i'm going to take you back to our first ever podcast hi and welcome to the first episode of the defenders tv podcast the podcast about the marvel netflix shows daredevil aka jessica jones luke cage iron fist all leading to the miniseries Defenders. And these will start on April 10th with the release worldwide of Daredevil, a 13-episode series. Hi, I'm Derek. I'm one of your hosts. And hi, I'm John, one of your other hosts. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Yeah. Absolutely. Exciting times. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're pretty close to the release of the first uh, show of the Marvel Netflix series. Yes, um, Daredevil on the 10th of April. This year, 2015, exclusively on Netflix, mm -hmm. being distributed to every eye socket um, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Which awesome. is great about Netflix. Absolutely. There you go. Nothing's changed <laughs> at all there, except there's been one extra voice added, obviously. Uh, and we're on the cusp of the actual Defenders TV show. We've got two more episodes left after this one of Iron Fist, and then we're on to the Defenders in August. Absolutely. And remember, we have fluctuated. We started as two. We moved to four. We moved to four, and then we came back down to three. Let's not forget our our sturdy uh, female companion, Irene, as we, well. We will never forget Irene. Absolutely, Absolutely. never forget. But, Chris, since you weren't on that, we've got to give you your first intro. Uh, I'm Derek, I'm one of your hosts, and I'm joined by two of our co-hosts for the Daredevil podcast. Uh, firstly, I'll introduce Chris. What's up, everybody? I'm Chris. I know way too much about Marvel Comics. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome on board, Chris. This is Chris' first podcast for uh, Defenders TV Podcast. Uh, good to have you on board. There you go. That's your first time on board. And you found out, I think, over the course of the last two years, that in comparison to some members of our listenership and our fellow Defenders, you know nothing, Chris Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I have one more going. That we was kind of a nothing. big statement, and now I'm kind of slightly regretting it. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to take it back to John's distributing to <laughs> eye sockets around the world. Brilliant. That I've never heard something as fantastic as that. I think they should use that for marketing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Beam directly into your brain and lay your eye sockets. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. And of course, as I said, nothing's changed except we've gone through five seasons of The Defenders so far and Agent Carter, plus all the MCU movies. And uh, we're now waiting for Defenders to come up. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is coming up in August. That's right. That's right. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. As Chris mentioned, we are we do have some voicemails, which we're going to actually change up our format. Why not? It's 100 episodes. We want to celebrate that, right? So I think it's time to listen to some voicemails from some of our listeners. First up, we have Claire Payne. Hello, John, Derek and Chris. Congratulations on your 100th episode of Defenders TV podcast. There are probably 100 ways I could describe how fantastic your podcasts are. And um, One thing above all, I think that always has stand out to me is that how fair and honest you are when you come to review all films and tv programs in the marvel world i came across a film critic quote um the film critic is called robert ebert and this is what he had to say about superheroes the key ingredient in any interesting superhero is not having great power and influence but vulnerability there is always a kind of sadness underlying the personalities of the great superheroes who have been given great knowledge and gifts but few consolations in their battle against evil. So thank you very much once again and here's the next 100 episodes. Bye bye for now. Thanks so much Claire and a quote from one of the greatest film critics of all time, Roger Ebert's there. Uh, really cool yeah Yeah. absolutely thank you so much Claire um I think uh yeah you've definitely you pulled something out there we've we've always tried to be fair and fun okay we don't necessarily skirt around negatives at all but Mm -hmm. and there's been a few uh non-defense that have that have occurred um but despite all of that we do uh try and sort of recognize the fact that you know no writer, no director, no actor will go out of their way to do a poor performance. It's, it's just how you view it. It's the perception. It's the opinion. Mm-hmm. And so we always try and put a, a, a lighter or more positive spin on it at the end of the day. Yeah, I just want to actually talk about that bit, Claire. Thank you so much. I think that's one of the things when we decided that we were going to do this, when we came, came into it, um, there's enough... How do you put this? There's enough negativity in the world Absolutely. as is, um, be it for whatever reason. I don't want to get into politics or history or anything like that. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we'd like to try and see the best in everything. Mm-hmm. And the main point is that if we can make any of our listeners happier or just put you in a slightly better mood than you were when you're going to work because who likes going to work in the morning um, <laughs> or at night depending on what, what hours you work uh-huh. um, yeah like as long as we can put a smile on your face and do it in an intelligent way sometimes that, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah or a smutty way sometimes or a smutty yeah in your <laughs> or window a funny watch. way yeah exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, thanks so much for that Claire and of course we're also great fanboys oh big time big time absolutely uh, i think it's on to robert who has an interesting an interesting idea about a character from iron fist that you might be interested in well done lads on reaching your century of podcasting it's an amazing achievement and it's been brilliant to listen along to lots of the things that you've been doing just a short thought really have you th- looked at madame gow with a cane and a little wrinkled ways and thought actually She's what would happen if Yoda had been less green and turned to the dark side instead of carrying on as a good little Jedi. Anyway, thank you very much. I am greatly enjoying it. Keep going. Thank you so much, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Robert. Ah, uh, that is hilarious. Yeah, little little Madame Yoda. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. I love, I love this idea. Uh, maybe she becomes Yoda in the future. You know, she she could last for another thousand years and get smaller and smaller. Absolutely. And of course, uh, Robert also suggested the uh, rusty foots as That's well. Correct. Not knowingly, of course, for for the the poll. But um, I think I, I I whipped it from one of his comments. And uh, yeah, thank you, Robert, for for that. Uh, and we'll hopefully certainly keep going. It's also nice to hear a Northern English accent. That's very true. Very true. Coming from Lancashire, um, you know, it's it, it warms the cockles of the old heart. Yeah, poor John is a bit outnumbered by Irish people on the podcast. Always has been. But. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I'm kind of now, you know, I'm half and half. It's like chips and rice. Um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 
Um, I'm never going to look at Madame Guy now the same way, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you. If she slips up her lines once, it's going to be like, mm, no. It's if she starts speaking uh, backwards, yeah. reversing her sentences. Yes. Um, yeah. Latin English, I think it was. Exactly. Um, thanks so much for that, Robert. Uh, Teresa in the US also sent us a message. Hey, guys. This is Teresa Affleck from the United States. I started listening to you guys during Daredevil Season 2 and had to go back and listen to your other Commentary on Jessica Jones and Daredevil Season 1. Uh, love your work. Keep it up. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks so much, Teresa. I want to think of you that you're Ben Affleck's sister. Um, so thanks very much for joining us for our podcast. Really good. Really good of you. Uh, yeah, th- thanks very much for listening. It's, it's nice when someone joins a bit later into the podcast and then goes back and listens to all the other covers that we've done especially when we've had 100 episodes so thanks so much for joining us yeah thank you Teresa. it's just really good to to hear from you and i think it's again yeah as you say it's one of those things where you know people come in and out and stay or leave for a while come back um and i love all that kind of community how yeah. it's just so so flexible so good to have you on board Teresa, and thank you so much for the the voicemail definitely Oh, Teresa, thank you very much. Now, at least we we now know we are going global. Mm-hmm. We have American listeners. And I kind of have to apologize. She kind of came in with Daredevil where we knew what we were doing. We were probably a bit more professional about it. <laughs> and then she went back to the beginning. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we at did. least you weren't there, Chris. That's true. So, you know, yeah. in that sense, you've always been professional. That's true, yeah. I'm taking that, I'm taking it, <laughs> taking it, and I'm running. It does remind me, Chris didn't have to go through the Ben Affleck Daredevil film. Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah. I, I so, went through it. Someday I'm going to have to make you just do a solo Electra podcast <laughs> episode just, just for that. Just to make In up. fairness, I love the, the, the original, oh, sorry, the extended version of Daredevil. Yes. Um, but I still couldn't uh, stop laughing with the, the bags of rice or flour on the strings. Yeah. That yeah. was funny. That was pretty, that was pretty bad. Uh, speaking of going global, we also have a message from Australia from Ronaldo. Hi guys, it's Ray from Australia, and I just want to wish you um, all the very best and congratulate you on 100 episodes. Well done, that's a fantastic achievement, um, and it's given many hours of uh, entertainment to, I'm sure, many a fan. Uh, I just wanted to actually say um, just some random things about you guys. <laughs> um, um, Derek, um, just thanks for, for steering the ship, that is the podcast and the, and the vodcast, um, I know there's a lot of logistics involved, but I really appreciate uh, all the efforts. Um, it's, a, it's a great and fun podcast, and it's created a great community. Um, John, I love your um, marking system. It's really, really entertaining. Uh, every week uh, you come up with something new, um, so that's always cool. One thing that just stick in my mind is, um, I can't remember the episode, but you mentioned four starch white uh, bloodied Wesley shirts so whenever I actually see a, a cleanly pressed white shirt I always think of of, <laughs> of that episode so thanks for that um, and Chris uh, finally um, probably no surprises here um, and everyone's probably heard a reference before but um, you're gonna have to re-listen to the podcast um, where they introduce the big hole in uh, Hell's Kitchen. Um, I I just laughed out loud with that. Um, So, yeah, thank you for introducing the concept of of the magic um, massive hand coming out of of, uh, Hell's Kitchen. Anyway, all the best, guys, once again, um, and hope for many more episodes. Cheers. Thank you, Ray, for that. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like Captain Captain Derek uh, of the Good Ship Defenders TV podcast. Yeah, no, Dictator Derek. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I don't, um, think I've, I don't think I've whined as much this season about my editing and uh, and how much work goes into the podcast. Yeah. I think I've, I think I've gotten better at my whining. So sorry yeah. to the listeners that I have <laughs> whined a lot in previous seasons. Derek is like a Catholic nun, always keeping us on the straight and narrow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think that's the first and hopefully last time ever we're referring to Derek as a Catholic nun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he please. looks great in a wimple. <laughs> <laughs> <Cosplay. Thank, laughs> absolutely. Thank you, Ray, for, for those kind words. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> and now I'll have to try and think of up some even more crazy uh, scoring systems to, to help out. I also think we need to just say to our Australian listeners as well about the home and away reference. <laughs> 
as a kid uh, growing up, uh, Home and Away seemed really exotic Absolutely. to me. Um, all those beach shorts, um, you just didn't get that around Ormskirk in Lancashire, no. except on one of the three sunny days <laughs> in the year. Um, I think of it as like if you were watching Coronation Street and you thought, I really want to go to that terraced row and live there <laughs> in that rain and go to that smoky rover's return. Yeah, okay, okay. I can see exotic might be a term used to describe that. <laughs> you know, Manchester, industrial, sooty, and uh, cloudy. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Um, but certainly, yeah, Home and Away, much a bigger fan of Home and Away than uh, than Neighbours. Right, right, I see. And Chris, Ray got, the, uh, Ray got your reference in quicker <laughs> than you did this time. I know, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> like, this has become a running guy. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that at one point there is, some of the writers of these series are listening to us, and they'll just, just put it in for me. Just a, a, an Easter egg or something, and they'll know it's just for me. It's something about a hand and a hole and a... You will, you will make my, you will make my, you will make my centenary. Oh, that would have to be more than a, more than a, an Easter egg, though. To be honest, wouldn't it? Well, um, given the time it's in it, a big Easter bunny could come out. Of it. <laughs> or given this episode of, of Iron Fist, it could be an ear. You never know. You never know. Thank you so much for that, Ray. And Rebecca has sent us in some questions for our hundredth podcast. So, uh, so take, take note. See see what your answers will be. Uh, thanks so much for for that, Ray. And thanks, Rebecca. Hi guys, Rebecca here. Just wanted to say congratulations on hundred episodes. It's been great. Enjoying it so far. Hope you're enjoying Iron Fist. But first of all, let's uh, switch topics to the magnificent Thor trailer. Um, I just wanted you to have a chance to talk about how you thought Finn had done in acquiring the Marvel abs since being cast. Um, obviously, no Hemsworth. Um, and let's talk about those arms and uh, abs and the haircut. Um, and also, do you think um, Danny's transformation with the haircut was as magnificent as Thor's? Um, and can we please just talk a bit more about the Thor trailer in amongst all of this? A second of all... Um, you know, do you think there's a place for a slightly more comedic tone in the Marvel Netflix shows? Do you think they've pitched it right? Um, would you like to see something more wacky when we get all four of our guys and gals together for the Defenders? And um, I guess, what are you looking forward to most this year now uh, after Iron Fist? All right. Take care. and Thanks again. Here's to the next hundred. Bye. Thanks, Rebecca. John, do you want to take uh, the comparative there? We love talking about abs, angle grinders, um, six packs, <laughs> eight packs, uh, two pack, um, as well as uh, arms and shoulders and, and all things uh, sort of muscular and honky. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Finn Jones, he's got the, the, the skinny abs. So just right. by the virtue that he's a thin sort of wee chap um, that, you know, that they poke on through. Um, <laughs> but I think he's definitely got the, I think the first time we see the Marvel nipples here. Um, yeah, he, he's got the nipples standing tall and proud nice. uh, whenever he gets his shirt off. So definitely, I think it's more Marvel nipples uh, on, on this one than, than the abs but yeah i just want him to eat something yeah he's a waif <laughs> he in is. comparison he is. just when we kind of like if you line them all up between chris hemworth chris pratt mm-hmm. and captain america himself yeah like the, the fins are slightly down it's just like okay like maybe we'll just pump you full of protein jake it's just because his name isn't chris that's all uh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's like steve rogers before he got the serum no he's definitely but got, a bit, yeah definitely a bit, bit lighter i think i think for for me honestly i think matt's got the kind of boxer's body he's got he's he is lithe and skinny but he definitely has the marvel abs you got luke cage who's a much bigger built guy and he's definitely got the abs as well you can't see them on finn he's he's a skinny uh, kung fu fighter so he's much he's much tighter and much more much more lean so yeah and jessica's got the madonna abs she does. at the end of the day as well. i think she's got more abs than finn that's probably- I'm kind of like i'm kind of like but christine ritter worked out more <laughs> yeah i think i think that they might be the whiskey abs are they uh, yeah maybe maybe i think uh, as well just on, on the second point as well um in terms of more humor in mm. in the mcu um, oh, sorry, Marvel Netflix uh, universe. 
Like, um, I think one of the things I really enjoyed about Jessica Jones was more the sly humor, uh, the sarcastic humor. I think mm. that kind of really sat with me in terms of, uh, you know, maybe British kind of Irish Sensibility. sensibilities mm. and, and so on. Certainly Daredevil is very serious. Uh, and I think, you know, in that sense, Claire Temple is, is a good foil. She brings a good bit of humor. Yeah. Um, now, whether they need to or, or should ratchet it up to maybe Guardians of the Galaxy kind of level or, or maybe even the with the Doctor Strange stuff... I mean, they've certainly got room to, but yeah. I think at this moment they've pitched it in a way that it is more serious. I kind of like that, but I, I do like the little bits of, of humour that come through, um, in particular around uh, Jessica Jones. I, I yeah. really uh, did like some of that stuff, the the sarcasm in particular. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I agree. Even though that is the lowest form of wit. I, I, my favourite form of wit, really. It's the only one we know, <laughs> to be fair. It's That's what we, we're good at. That's very true. On the humour thing, Thing, I, I think there's two bits, right? Mm-hmm. So we have Squirrel Girl and Co. coming. Not this in the that. Marvel Netflix universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. If that works, then we have a potential. Mm-hmm. Um, there's... Well, that's a half-hour comedy show, yeah. so it better, and, it better have laughs. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more like, do, could you go then down the route of Paradise? Okay. Which is a DC show at the moment. Yeah. Um, which is set in the universe, no heroes, mm. but... I'm actually enjoying it. Okay. It's not the greatest comedy in the world, but it's it's funny and it's a lot of uh a lot of Easter eggs and kind of nods to the DC universe. Right, okay. I think if they go that way. Saying that now, I think there is room for uh, uh Guardians of the Galaxy styled TV show Definitely. in the Mar- The thing about the Marvel Netflix universe is it's the on the street heroes. Mm-hmm. So, and it's all set around New York. Yeah. So, could you just move it to LA and have a comedy section around LA? Yeah. So, all the shows are based in that one are a bit more humorous, a bit more. Are you saying New York's not humorous? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that, <laughs> so, but based on yeah, okay. So you're thinking comedy West Coast Avengers is basically what you think? Almost. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like like Wonder Man. Thing. What I'm kind of looking, what I'm kind of hoping for, to be honest, is that now they've all had their origin stories out of the way, which are all really serious. You know, you got you got Luke Cage in prison. You've got Danny dealing with the de- death of his father. You've got um, obviously the abuse for Jessica Jones. You've got. Danny Rand dealing with the death of his parents and finding out who they are. Now that those origin stories are, are over at the end of this series, kind of hoping that when they get together, there'll be some good banter between the characters. So I can see a bit of humour between Danny and Luke. Yeah, absolutely. That's... And Jessica and, and Matt meeting up where she's questioning why he's so serious all the time. You know, hopefully there'll be a bit of levity between those characters. Yeah, yeah like I, I think certainly in, in terms of Luke Cage, Iron Fist, I really hope they they bring about that kind of that that back and forth chit chat and banter like you know this idea of opposites attract um mm. I, I i really hope they they work in some uh, some great sort of banter between them because I, I think it it has room for it and certainly i think rebecca like that's a great little avenue um for for introducing it uh, along with maybe bringing rocket raccoon into it i think well, maybe <laughs> you, uh, as of the time we're recording on good friday and uh-huh. uh, news has just broke that guardians of the galaxy volume 2 mm-hmm. has become the highest rated um movie from the mcu in, with test audiences oh really okay so and that includes then disney right and star wars wow so this is becoming the highest rated, <laughs> cool. highest tested score right. for any film they have had. Yeah. So there's, this is going to get the, the, the execs in Marvel and most likely in Disney going, there is room for a more comedic, mm-hmm. slightly serious, well, okay, even not really serious. Not really that serious. No. Okay. <laughs> a comedic slash kind of emotionally heartstrung some points. Yeah. Uh, Films, so then they'll probably bring in more. And I think one of the ones they do is Runaways, which is coming 
That's true. Also, not to Netflix, though. No. I think I think Netflix were going to have a problem here because we've got Defenders coming up. Um, Punisher has just finished filming oh, God, yeah. season two. That's going to be a barrel of laughs. It will Punisher. be. It will yeah. be yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can see John Bernthal smiling his way around the city as he destroys people. Um, yeah, I can't really can't really see it, there being too much humor in, <laughs> in these characters, but I'm hoping there's some humorous scenes. We do oh, get a laugh. I did chuckle when he chopped his head off. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, thank you so much for that, Rebecca. I think we've got one last voicemail hi everybody this is jose molina from marvel's agent carter i'm here to heartily defend johnny and Derek and their defenders tv podcast these lads deliver everything a good podcast should they know their stuff they love what they're talking about and most of all they're funny i give them five red peggy hats cheers boys happy anniversary Thank you so, so much for that feedback, Jose Molina. Really, really good of you to send that in. Jose is one of the writers on over on Agent Carter. We kind of met him over on Twitter uh, after reviewing one of the episodes of Agent Carter that he'd written. Um, he got in contact with us a few times by direct message. Basically, if we were ever late with a podcast, he'd send me a direct message saying, where is it? When's it coming? Why isn't it in my iTunes account? Which was hilarious and really good fun. And absolutely lovely of you to send that message to us. Thanks, Jose. Hope we see you back writing for Agent Carter so at some point once you finish writing over in the tick. Yeah, thank you so much for, for that kind message, uh, Jose. Uh, really appreciated. Uh, I'll try and keep up the good scoring ratings. That's two now. That's pretty good, yeah. Pressure. <laughs> Loads <laughs> of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crumple. <laughs> How would you rate that crumbling? <laughs> <laughs> Um, five panic attacks. Five out. panic attacks. Five nervous breakdowns out of five. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So so good of all of you to send in your feedback. We've had, had such a pleasure doing this podcast over the last uh, over the last two years, um, and and having the interaction with our audience has been great fun. So if you want to interact with us a bit more, you can go and join us over in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Defenders TV Podcast. You'll probably recognise some of the names of the people that sent in voicemails to us from that podcast group. They've been really good uh, with interacting with us and, and obviously always good to hear from them and always good to hear from you uh, make sure you email us at feedback at defenders tv podcast.com with any of your thoughts about the season of iron fist and you can also see us over on twitter at defenders cast absolutely and of course i finally got round to putting up the image of all the prize goodies for the prize draw um on our 13th episode of this iron fist run that's right and uh so yes there's a few vinyl pops in there uh to do with iron fist a couple of t-shirts mm-hmm. as well the defenders um, t-shirts yeah the defenders t-shirt as well as um a logan t-shirt and um, there's a Logan vinyl pop as mm-hmm. well as a few other bits and bobs, uh, a few little badges, uh, a few little stickers, a few little pins. Yeah. Um, and yeah, all for uh, anyone who sends in a voicemail uh, to review or comment on any of the episodes that you've seen uh, of this series of I'm Fist. So there's still a few, a uh, couple of days to go before we get to our 13th and final review of uh, this first series of I'm Fist. So mm-hmm. please uh, send them in and you just go over to uh, defenderstvpodcast.com. And of course, importantly, uh, if you uh, want to subscribe to the podcast uh, and review us, please head over to DefendersTVPodcast.com forward slash iTunes or on any other good or evil podcast catcher that may suit Android. <laughs> uh, guys, and I think with that, and more importantly, thank you again for everyone. It was, it's fantastic to know that three guys who used to just have these crazy discussions mm-hmm. by ourselves can now in- involve you in these crazy discussions <laughs> Absolutely. too. Absolutely. But because we this is still a podcast and we still have another episode to go through, why don't we go and take a look at this episode? Yes. Yeah. So, Derek, do you want to tell us who wrote and direct? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Season 1, episode 11 of Iron Fist, Lead Horse Back to Stable, was written by Ian Stokes, who also wrote, wrote episode 7, Felling Tree with Roots. Uh, I think that was one of our favourite episodes of the season so far, wasn't it? Really good one. Um, this was directed by Deborah Chow, who has directed episodes of Fear the Walking Dead, which I've really enjoyed, and Mr. Robot, another fantastic drama Excellent, series. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed that. John, do you want to tell us what they gave you with your synopsis of this episode of Iron Fist? Sure. After their escape from the hand, an injured Danny Rand tells Davos that they will not return to Kunlun until he has destroyed the hand in New York. 
With Danny's chi still drained, they seek Claire Temple's help, where she extracts the fragment of Bakuto's weapon from Rand's wound, stopping the bleeding. As Danny tries to restore his power, Claire and Davos share a chewy pizza, where Davos reveals his inner struggle to reconcile his friendship with Danny and his anger at him leaving his post as the defender of Conlun. At the same moment, Colleen arrives and attempts to reason with Danny, but he is still too hurt to accept her explanation and apology, and she is still too conflicted to inform Bakutu that she has found the Iron Fist. Bakutu's operatives swoop on Colleen, and unwilling to accept her reasons, decides to use her for revival. Meanwhile, Harold, realising that Bakuto has been transferring Rand Enterprises' money to his own accounts, formulates a plan to flush out Bakuto by freezing the accounts. He teams up with Danny and Davos, who wait outside the compound, ready to spring their ambush. But as they wait, Danny spots Colleen escaping from the compound, and he races over to help, but in doing so exposes his feelings and affection for Colleen to Davos. It was a great ending. I thought he was going to kill her. Oh. Davos is going to kill Colleen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I thought there was there was definitely a bit of um, jealousy. Yeah, I think there may be a bromance there being disrupted. I think there might be a little bit of a be. bromance. Yeah, let's go, let's go back to the start. I think we've uh, we've got our normal way of covering our episodes. Yep. So what we usually do is we'll take our top five points. We'll kind of come together mm-hmm. and we'll just discuss each of those five points. Typically at some length. (laughs) And then we'll give you guys a few notes and then we'll ask each other, do we defend this episode of Iron Fist with either a defend or a do not defend? That's right. It's pretty simple. So I think we should kick off. Mm -hmm. Guys, point one. Yeah. Harold and Joy working together. Yes, yes. Uh, Joy side eye. The joy side eye. I think I think this just stood out to me um, when Harold's trying to share his plan with Joy and getting her involved in doing uh, in doing the accountancy of transferring the money that Bakudo stole back into the Rand uh, Rand organization. It just gives him this wonderful side eye. The reason why it stood out to me is because we haven't seen that much of Joy doing these types of things. It's much more of a word thing that we commented on in the first three or four episodes that he's got these great facial expressions, great reactions to things that are going on around him. And this time we see Joy's version of it where she just gives the dirtiest look to Harold where she's kind of going is that really what you want to do uh, so I just thought that was a great little a great little moment but interesting here yeah I think we we had talked about the two of them um being separated for for 12 years 13 years um not having any dealing between the two of them and now Joy's got her father back and he's pushing her into the place where Ward would have been sitting before yeah, definitely. Um, I think, uh, again, I really like how uh, Joy Meacham is, is kind of, you know, she obviously wants to, to be with her father. You know, she's got him back, but she's unsettled as to, you know, him coming back from the dead, the, the secrecy. And, and now there is this uh, push to to um, get rid of the hand. And I really liked the, the, the whole comment, which I, I kind of just, completely recognizes something that i would have said it's like you know just so that we're on the same page we're talking about bringing them in to you know bringing bakuto in to prison to to jail you know yeah. with with the police um and it's kind of like no we're gonna kill him you know it's it's time is is up and you know we need to cut off the the head for the snake to die as as danny says and i think um it's just like that kind of Oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah. We're doing this, are we? And like, kind of, she's she, you know, she's not sure about it, and she she settles back in. I mean, there's part of me wondering: is she happy with that? Is she going to do something that surprises Harold, like effectively inform the police, or is she going to try and change their minds? I mean, she didn't in this episode, but yeah, I just recognize that as something that you would kind of say. You know what are we doing here? What's the end game? Yeah. Um, and I liked how she did that definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of spoke about joy in the last episode. Mm-hmm. More, but I just don't buy this story thread. Right. I think don't buy is probably too strong. It's just that. So I discussed saying for our listeners who maybe missed last episode. Mm-hmm. My kind of whole piece was that your father has just come back from the dead. You've just found him there, and you were straight away willing to work with him, not ask deep questions about where have you been, why haven't you aged, mm-hmm. anything like that. Now, unless this has all happened off screen, yeah, yeah, but they haven't hinted at it happening off screen yet. 
uh, or even said, do you remember that discussion we had earlier? Mm. Like, like there's usually some exposition where you can kind of almost just tell the audience, that, okay, well, look, they've had this, they've discussed it off, off, uh, off screen, yeah. and we're getting there. So I still just don't buy fully joy working with Harold. Mm-hmm. Like, just being so willing to kind of just jump in to being evil to a degree. Well, I think I think she's a bit freaked out when he says something like he's going to kill someone. I think she's definitely freaked out by that. But the concept is that he has found someone that's been embezzling from their company who doesn't even work for the company. It's not even like Lawrence has been embezzling from the company. Somebody has found access into their company and is stealing from them. This is the company she ran for 10 years with, with Ward. So effectively, it doesn't feel like an evil plot to her. It feels like I'm now closing down a, a leak that's been within my company and and Harold's doing that with me. But yeah, she's she's definitely starting to get very freaked out by how far he's going. Uh, that's definitely coming up. Absolutely. And I think you get in the sense, you know, that Harold, you know, he's speaking to his two henchmen there and it's all very kind of, he, he's keeping stuff from her. So for mm-hmm. he, he's he's rose tinting his presence uh, there. She doesn't know the full truth. Yeah. I mean, for example, he, she doesn't know that Ward is in Birch Psychiatric Hospital. Yeah, he's yeah. keeping that knowledge away from her. So she she's not totally in the light about him. Um, so he is rose tinting it for her, definitely, mm-hmm. which probably um, means she's less freaked out if he started saying, well, I've actually committed your your brother to a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> yeah. Um, he tried to kill me. I've come back. For, I mean, like, there's a lot he's keeping from her. And yeah, you're probably right that there's an element of this that we're expected to consider has been done off screen uh, yeah. to some extent definitely um i also think bakuso is a fast mover as well i mean no sooner has he got gal um out the way than uh he's absolutely draining rand of, of its funds for his own account so, yeah, yeah. like yeah okay bakuto you know pretty well, fast mover so I, I agree with both your points okay I, mm-hmm. I can see that and you kind of turned me around the last episode what got me here was she mentions that this was happening on a scale that made the FCC that would make their eyes bulge or something like that. I'm right. paraphrasing. Right. For a CEO like that, you would think she would like. So her dad said, "Okay, I'll, I'll cut off his head. I'll kill him, etc." Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. But you would think, okay, well, actually, hold on. We found a huge amount of embezzling. Rather than trying to hide it, let's go to the actual authorities mm-hmm. because you. I don't know. It. It, it was just. There's something about this, and as of episode eleven right now, mm-hmm. this thread is just starting to kind of almost grate on me. In just they just need to either say say that they've had discussions that are heart, they show a heartfelt. Obviously, Harold wouldn't be heartfelt, so he'll be doing it as on like on the literally on the sly. He'll be rose tinting it completely for her. Yeah, but having her having some kind of not breakdown, but like. Uh, showing a large amount of emotion, crying, mm-hmm. going, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Like, if they built it to the point where she just then cracks and that happens, right. that then explains, okay, she was holding it all in, yeah. hold, trying to yeah. be professional, etc. Yeah. It's just, I don't care right now. Okay. It's okay. The, a, a thread I just don't. And it I did feel like a really it. weird plot, which was basically, we'll take all of his money and that'll make him come out of his compound. Yeah. It's like, well, no, it'll make him call his banker to find out what's going on. Uh, it felt like if you did send the cops with their sirens to the outside of his compound, that would probably make him come out because he would have to. But yeah, it did feel like a bit of a weird plot to the point where I was questioning, is it Bakuto that is stealing the money? Was it not Gao? And Harold's just turning it to say it's Bakuto that's stealing the money because it feels a bit odd that Bakuto would have been that, that involved in Harold's business. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Gao has been involved for years, obviously, because she's the one that brought him back to life. But it feels like he's kind of going, okay, well, Gao's already taken care of. I'll flip this on Bakuto and say it's and say it's him so that Joy will get involved. It feels like that's what he's using. You know it what I mean? could be. I mean, I think that she believed that they may have been going to, to the authorities because it's only mm-hmm. on the couch that she is saying... Uh, hang on, we're on the same page here. We're taking them to the police. Yeah. So yeah. I think in her mind, that is still what's happening. Mm-hmm. And her father's not said anything against it. It's more about drawing him out. So that could be to draw him out to 
to be arrested. Mm. But I also think there's an element of corporate cover-up. I mean, as an, as a corporation, does Rand want to show that it's been in collusion with um, a, a an organisation or, or that this embezzlement is going on? Because mm-hmm. obviously that weakens stock. Um, this is starting to get uh, fairly uh, technical. But, I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's the idea of... Um, would they want this coming out? Um, yeah. Or do they, are they trying to keep it confidential? Absolutely. And, and maybe and who that's found out why... about it? Oh, our CEO who died 12 years ago of yeah. cancer. <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of, of things they, had, they do have to cover up. Like. I mean, I've kind of just really seen this more as trying to now link to Bakuto after they've removed Gao. Um, you know, it's kind of that next stage. But um, yeah, I think there's definitely um, more interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I'm just hoping, so we're episode 11, I'm hoping by mm-hmm. the end of episode 13, if Joy is still with us, if, like, whatever, like, they keep her as a, a recurring character in the, the Defenders, Yeah, I want to care about her. Okay. And I think they had it at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then they've lost me, and I, I think the elements are there to make you kind of care about the Meacham's storyline what's who is ward oh yeah who is joy who is harold how that's all going to tie up yeah i think it's just it could be that it's just uh, there's so much other things happening in this episode right such as our next point absolutely Uh, i think i care more about that yeah absolutely let's let's crack on to the next one we get a bit of a reveal about Davos in this episode that he wanted to be the Iron Fist, that he was uh, he was working his way through the ranks just like Danny was, um, and Danny was the one that was chosen by the leaders of Kunlun to be the Iron Fist and to go and have that battle with Shaolai the Undying. Well, so. to take the test, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, he may not have succeeded necessarily, mm-hmm. but I mean, Davos Did actually just want says to send him in first to kind well, of kill yeah. him off or something. But I mean, <laughs> it's a test, and people. Yeah fail it yeah. um you know you have to be worthy to be the iron fist i think the interesting thing from from davos here is that he saw it as a birthright um i actually really absolutely thoroughly enjoyed um davos's conversation uh with claire mm. over the pizza and o- over the tea ab- about that that conflict within him of you know his, his brotherhood his friendship with danny but at the same time you know as someone who's been born and raised in Kunlun, it's all about the protection of effectively his home yeah um yep. you know for danny there is still that degree of separation yes it's his home but it's his adopted home so yeah. there are still those feelings back to his original home and his original family in, in new york mm-hmm. so um that is a really nice dichotomy i think within this uh between the two of them yeah. and i loved actually how claire really pulled out here uh, from davos but also raised it with danny um this this idea of their suppression of their emotions and, and desires uh, and that 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 is not healthy the, the recentering thing that davos does um, and 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 we see Danny doing as well that you know it, it's a nice little sort of slant into this that they are so disciplined as warrior monks that you know the first opportunity of um you know feeling uh, romance with Colleen and it's it's difficult for uh, Danny to handle in the same way that Davos is finding it difficult to handle what he thought would be his and the fact that the person who then did become the Iron Fist has effectively abandoned his duty and yeah. his post in protecting the opened path to Kunlun now that the cycle uh, ha- has come round again. So I, I must say I, I really enjoyed this kind of back and forth between um, to, between Claire and Davos, and, and also again in in the the car outside of Bakuto's compound mm-hmm. uh, between Davos and Danny. That I, I like the fact that. He didn't keep it from from Danny as yeah, well, yeah, um, agreed. and uh, you know we we see this through the episode at the start where he's kind of like, yeah you know, he just automatically assumes right we're now going back to Kunlun and that's yeah. cut off uh, by by Danny, um, you know he's questioned who's who's the girl in, in terms of Colleen, so you know 
he's starting to see a different brother than, than um, you know, the one that left Kun Lun. So mm-hmm. that that's a really nice take, and I hope it has disastrous consequences <laughs> for them because, you know, the, the besmirched kind of uh, mate, uh, long-lost friend. Mm-hmm. The Mordo, if you, you know, will. Uh, the, the tension, uh, the emotion that yeah. that can bring, you know? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. This is very similar to the comic book origin. That Davos was... Mm. There was a jealousy element to this, to the creation of who Davos is yes. in the comics, and so. Okay, so like I, I didn't know that, or I think I thought, if I did, I didn't remember. Right. And I liked this. Mm-hmm. This is the origin of Danny Rand, the Iron Fist. Yes. Not of the Iron Fist itself. Yeah. And then this is the origin of Davos, the the Steel Serpent, versus just the, the, like. The Steel Serpent. Yeah. And I like how they're doing that. This is what I would have loved for Doctor Strange. And again, like, it's, it's it's different. We're getting 13 episodes, mm-hmm. 13 hour long episodes versus, like, two hours in a cinema. But the, this shows, okay, they were best of friends, and now that's, cracks are starting to come. Yeah. There was years of jealousy that has built up. And I think that's, that's the bit I find really interesting is, they've had, they're not allowed emotion. Yeah. So since they were 10... Up to now, fifteen years later, sixteen potentially, mm-hmm. they have been suppressing fear, um, uh, like love, uh, anger. Everything is just being pushed down yeah. into this, into the pit of their stomach, waiting to explode. Mm-hmm. I had this thought: What happens when Danny learns to control that mm-hmm. and and uh, allows himself the emotion? But then what happens when, because I think Claire says it, what happens when it explodes? Absolutely, yeah. And as you say, this is the the best use of a character like Claire, I think. Um, I think it's the best use of Claire that we've seen all season, really. Yeah, I really um, enjoyed Claire in, you, in this episode. You really need a character like that who is down-to-earth New York girl to react to someone going, I haven't had any emotions since I've been in Kunlun. You know, that's that the reaction from somebody who is driven by emotion like Claire is most of the time um, is exactly what you need. And I, th- I thought I thought it was it was great to see that character back where she's kind of going, that's that's not healthy, really. Is it? You know, the crazy thing is, if you think back when we were first introduced to Claire mm-hmm. back in Daredevil season one. OK, yeah, that, that she jumped a lot. Kind of, it was like, oh my, like the hospital roof scene. Mm-hmm. There was an element of she's a little bit damsel in distress. Yes, to begin exactly. With. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know how to. No, no. I was saying, kind of, now look at her. Danny kind of freaks out on the table, slams his fist down. Yeah, she doesn't flinch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think that even should, like for me, this is such a great growth for this character of Claire mm-hmm. Temple. Again, was sorry, Dawson is. Oh, it's brilliant. Surreal. Yeah, she's yeah. really good. <laughs> but yeah, also by the way, she's Barbara Gordon in the Batman Lego film. Apparently, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> well, hey, um, even better. <laughs> this for me was like she's like yes, like you can't do this anymore. Yeah. And then when she sends Danny to the roof, mm-hmm. you can still see him you know, struggling with like okay push it down oh no flashback push it down this explains even the flashbacks now yeah yeah like okay I know we're in episode 11 which potentially could have explained this slightly earlier oh yeah but it's all making sense this is like this is some huge Stephen King novel where a (laughs) hundred like a hundred crazy things have happened but now we're getting towards the end of the book and he's tying up all those threads right. together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I love the flashbacks um in this episode. I think as you say, the the flashbacks give a, a, a better sense of his conflict because it flashes between things like Colleen, Kunlun, Bakuto or uh, and all that. Uh, the earlier flashbacks with, with the lines felt more like kind of a reminiscing or, or a memory. Um, but it, I think it really adds to understanding Danny's conflict. I think I would agree. I just a little bit earlier would have been nice yeah. um, for me f- for those. I think just quickly back to Davos as well. I'm wondering if this delay that has been now brought on him by Danny wanting to stay in New York, does that mean, I wonder, if when he or when they go back to, to Kunlun, whether the path is closed yes. and he has been separated? And if, given his musings with Claire and... Uh, and Danny in this episode, whether that means it becomes 
like tragic for him like that he's now he's been cut off from his home yeah. and it's Danny's fault well let's um, quickly talk about that that'd be interesting yeah because that's kind of the next point really is about the flashback to the battle with Shella the Undying uh, that we that we don't see but we see <laughs> unfortunately we still haven't seen the dragon um, but we see a little bit of the flashback to Kun Lun the first time we've seen Kun Lun it's in the distance in this scene but we do see uh, the flashback also of Danny protecting the way into uh, Kun Lun uh, looks like the most boring job <laughs> you could ever have. You are the most powerful being, being on earth to protect a wall that won't open for 15 years. Um, you know, and you can see that in Danny. He's he's kind of going, OK, I'll, I'll just sit here and stack rocks all day. Whereas Davos still feels that he's really motivated by it. He still feels I get up every morning. I will go and protect this wall that hasn't moved. So, yeah, I think this is leading to the fact that this will be the bit that pushes Davos over the edge. He's realized that Danny's left Kunlun. He went there to get him back, bring him back, thought he could convince his best friend that this is what you trained for, is to stand on that road and block the path in case the hand came. And now at the time we're most vulnerable, you've left it alone. And he goes back to Kunlun and potentially that gateway is closed to Davos. Um, yeah, that would push him completely over the edge, I presume. Yeah, I mean... I really loved the the opening. I mean, I do wish we kind of had seen some of um, the the dragon and mm-hmm. the fight, but even in flashback in that early start, because I did, I just thought it was really cool seeing Davos rush up and seeing Danny the face down, unconscious, or you know, just out of it. Yeah. Um, and him turning it over, and there's the you know the newly emblazoned. Um, symbol of the iron fist on his chest i i really enjoyed that and i i did like how the camera kind of sort of moved and focused in on this uh cool looking cave actually um i don't know where it was shot but i i loved this the whole feel of of that environment um where they were and of course part of me wants to see shao lao the undying it would have been good to see him plunge his fist uh, into the molten heart of the dragon to to capture uh the power of the the the, the chi i kind of still liked it um, and and we do get a you know a long view of kunlun off in the distance uh-huh. um, we don't get to see the tree that madam gao used to settle under we didn't go into it but uh yeah we get a, a brief wide angled shot yeah two more episodes john two more episodes <laughs> i'm i'm really interested so why do you think we didn't get the dragon if hbo with game mm. of thrones yeah can do this. Yeah. The technology's there to do it on a certain budget. Yeah. A, mu- like, a much higher budget than uh, Iron Fist got. Okay. So mm. it probably did come down to money. Probably. I thought at least they do, when they panned into the cave in that mm-hmm. scene, I thought you would have got a puff of smoke or uh, literally two. I think I said this in the very beginning or in the one on one. Like just red eyes. Yeah, I think yeah. I think actually you mentioned it in the last episode, Chris, as well. I'm going to jump onto one of my notes that I had for the episode because it, there is some really interesting. I had to watch it a couple of times actually because I kept rewinding it uh, as the camera pans in when Davos is running towards Danny, who's knocked out. There's a little flex of flame that you see at the front of the right in front of the camera. Um, it doesn't look like it's going over a candle or a fire or anything like that. There's also some movement that happens on the screen when. Davos reaches Danny. There's some little flitting in, of movement shadows kind of moving away. Um, and I think that's, I think, possibly, that that is a reference to Shallow escaping and getting out of the cave, effectively. So I think we may have seen all we're going to see of the dragon. It was just little wisp, wisps of flame and this bit of movement over in the corner of the screen. Have a look when, when, we, uh, when we finish up. But, um, but I think that's all we're going to see. Why didn't we see it? Because... Uh, I think they, they want to keep the mystery and I think they're doing the mystery quite well I like the conversation between Davos and Claire where he references it was a dragon that he that, she, that he fought and Claire going there's no such thing <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was cool and him going um, it's not like a little dragon we're talking like infinite here so he, he wants to create the idea in your mind and the writers want to create the idea in your mind that the dragon is whatever you think it is we're not going to create a dragon for you on screen because yeah. we probably don't have the budget for it. But wouldn't it would have been quite cool seeing Davos running up the the valley uh, along the stream, racing up, mm-hmm. um, that you heard some kind of noise, like some sort of painful noise, and maybe even some kind of quick uh, glow or, or, or flash of, of light. 
um, and then he reaches him. So again, you maintain the mystery, but you know you, you get a sense that there's something epic happening. Yeah, um, I think that would have been cool, but that's nonetheless. I think uh, I, I kind of like that run up. I like the greenery, and I like the kind of sense. Um, these monks' clothes though are really, really shabby. I they are. I get Danny; he's just been fighting a dragon, but like, uh, yeah, really filthy. Yeah, but even when they were standing in protecting the way in like that's a couple of days later I presume in fact we know it's about 12 or 13 days later because that's Danny's been stacking the rocks for the 12 or 13 days so yeah they probably should have washed their clothes at some point shouldn't they <laughs> um, I was looking for the, those hints and I didn't see it yeah I think that's the, I think that's the, the shame yeah mm-hmm. so they didn't they hinted but I don't think they hinted strongly enough that a lot of people would have got it no, no absolutely okay. so, yeah. I missed them you missed it as yeah. well okay so it's not Okay, I may have bad. been overlooking for it, and I'm not sure if they were intended to be picked up as hints, but I did, okay. I, I did see something. Okay. <laughs> it could have been a leaf just out of focus in the uh, in the in the shot that made me think something was moving. But then it's like one of those high art paintings where it's like black. It's like yeah. Rothko stuff, <laughs> right? Uh, and you're like. Is that a shade of black, or is that the shadow yeah. from the sun? Or I'm, am I now going cross-eyed? We just have to watch it on yeah. a 4K TV, I guess. Yeah. Uh, gotta go to Chris's next. So just, just okay, so then on to just Kun Lung and then Danny, just because I want to get my points in here mm-hmm. on this. With Kun Lung, how long does it stay on Earth of, the, the plane of Earth? I actually can't remember, okay. but I th- I don't think it's for like another fifteen years or no. something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think it might even be shorter than that. But mm. I I can't remember now off the top of my head, and and that's why I'm thinking, in in terms of with with Davos, it would be, I think, really cool that this delay that's been now built in that he wasn't expecting. Yeah. Um, sort of cuts him off from it. Mm. Um, that would kind of just add to the level of kind of tension between these two yeah. but i yeah i off the top of my head i can't remember whether it's like a you know a 12 year 15 year cycle and and then the reverse cycle is yeah. the same which would make sense to me in in, in that sense but i i think it's shorter than uh it's like 15 months, years yeah I, I feel it i feel it is now again I'm, I'm i'm the i'm the one that doesn't know the comics as well as you guys either so uh but i, I feel that it's more uh it's more that it opens up Danny is kind of runs out of it, and then there may not be an opportunity for him ever to go back to Kunlun. He doesn't seem hugely bothered by that. Davos would be, yeah, yes, I definitely like that. I love this exposition when they had the two guys just standing there in front of the the small crack in the wall, mm-hmm. which obviously just expands and these expands and kind of collapses on itself. Yeah, uh, which is, it was a nice way. I have to admit that was a nice way to show the passage too, which mm-hmm. I thought that was the passage, right. But then Danny mentions the eagle. Mm-hmm. And I saw it fly further into the distance. Yeah. And it just kept going. And that was my sign. Yeah. And I was like, so the valley? You can get through it to the valley? So why are you just standing at like one spot? <laughs> that was kind of like, uh, okay. 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 Yeah. Like, it was a lovely shot. And he explains the eagle again. Now we under- understand why the eagle from the very beginning... Yeah. Now we can see it. Why? Yeah. Because that was his sign. That is his... He was trying... Like, that is his... I don't know. His... Uh, I would say the dragon would probably be his... <laughs> kind his of symbol. His yeah. symbol. Yeah. But I think like the, in his mind, there's this the, being as free as a eagle or a bird. It's definitely... It's definitely got a bird bird yeah. imagery there. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. So with Davos... This is the part I'm really interested in. Mm-hmm. Davos is so... This is a duty I was born for. Yes. This is what I I'm, I was destined to be. Mm-hmm. Like when you hear him talk about the outside world to Claire, it starts like this one. The writing in this one for me was just spectacular. Really good. It was just the conversational tonal shift when you have them talking about coffee. Oh, and don't let's not forget the pizza. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that scene for me, that was my kind of yeah, little like chuckle yeah. because it just kind of oh, we're talking about some heavy, heavy shit here, and then you went, 
Oh no! They're, they're, like I thought there was going to be more. Like life is like a pizza. Right. You, like you can only take so many slices until it's gone. <laughs> no, no, like something really profound. No. And you're gonna go, no, no. They're just talking about really good pizza, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm gonna check out this year. <laughs> I'm going to New York for a day, right. and I'm like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find that place because like, apparently it's a real place. Oh, right. They were Very talking cool. about it. Very cool. So I'm like, I'm holding you up, wow. Mr. Writer. If this pizza is not the best pl- pizza in the world. That's it. Iron Fist is done for me. <laughs> Joey, Joey's. Joey's. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's apparently a bit chewy. Yeah. I loved I loved how, I think, when Claire suggests getting it, he's like, no, it's bad for the soul, this kind of food. Uh-huh. And then just kind of seeing Davos kind of eat it sort of almost upside down kind of thing. Yeah. And he's like, it's not too bad. A bit chewy, but not too bad. But imagine okay. this was pizza was the thing that drove him over the that made him bad yeah that gave him a taste of the outside world he had pepperoni it was like like... oh my god it was all the pizza's fault the pizza created a super villain well if you want soul food he needs to get himself down to harlem really doesn't he that's true yeah definitely i think speaking about this scene because it does lead on really quickly to colleen the pizza delivery girl um (laughs) i love that there's a conversation between claire and colleen tying back in the fact that Claire has a huge amount of knowledge of the hand from her experience with them over on Daredevil, where they killed the friend that she worked with in the hospital. Um, And that's still obviously taking its toll on Claire. I love the fact that she calls it out. Well, if you're a different faction of the hand, why didn't you think of a different name for for them? You know, because if you're still calling yourself the hand and everybody knows the hand's an evil organization, they're going to assume you're an evil organization. Yeah, Um, I think it's quite clear. Again, Claire just setting setting it exactly what I would say in this situation. You know, call yourself the ear or the arm or something else if it needs to be a body part. But why call yourself the hand? Because everybody's going to think you're bad. I think they should have called themselves the helping hands. There you go. I like that. I think the great thing here as well is, uh, like, Colleen's return here both to Claire and to Danny, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I, I like how that kind of betrayal still sat w- with Danny. I, I like the fact that, you know, despite him not accepting the apology up on the roof, that, you know, she still has this conflict with regards to her loyalties to the hand. And yeah. I think then the fact, that that loyalty is shown to be worth nothing to Bakuto um, later on it is really, really good. I must mm. say, I really like Bakuto. I think he's a proper villain in, in the sense of, of, of how he is so calming, and yet then all of a sudden he he cannot believe what Colleen will do. Um, she's shown to be disloyal and everyone in the hand knows their job and must continue it. And then, you know, she gets that moment of clarity as she's being sent to effectively be drained of blood, which I'm wondering, did that happen to Daryl then, ultimately? So my, my grand theory that he is going to be used for some uh, constructive purpose um is correct. It's just that um, it's draining him of blood uh, for the revival chamber, and yeah, he's gone. That's a really good point. I didn't think about that at all, but yeah, that makes total sense. We, yeah. we saw some remnants of people who had been uh, yeah. put through it before, and yes, it's entirely possible that Daryl is, is one of those people. Daryl's gone bye bye, I oh, think. Dear. Um, I think as well, I kind of want to just bring in that Bakuto is. Uh, gambler in japanese um and we haven't really talked too much about him but i'm really liking uh, this character so i I was having a look and i don't think he's really too heavily involved in the comics he's been Mm. brought in obviously in the comics as well um in in daredevil uh, and he does something really bad to daredevil which i'm not going to say but uh the interesting thing about it is that within the the storyline you know he's a warlord uh and leader of one of the the factions of the hand Mm -hmm. Uh, a damio i think is how they they say it which kind of goes back to feudal japanese law of, of being vassals of the shogun and so on but okay. um yeah and interestingly two two interesting things from it is that he's a warlord in south america so all his accounts are going to south america very uh, good they say which is really interesting very good. Yep. Um, and the other one is that within the comics is that you know obviously the hand has five fingers but one of the big plans is that they're trying to bring all the 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 warlords together in 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 uh, in the comics because when you close this into a fist the hand is unstoppable and of course for the defenders it is a fist mm-hmm. that we see yes 
Very oh. true, yeah. So, um, you know, that ultimately... And I'm wondering as well now, you know, what's happened to Gao? Has she been, you know, killed by Bakuso? Is she still under house arrest? I certainly hope not, and I don't think so. Yeah. But if she is a faction, even though she might be one... Uh, that Bakuto doesn't approve of, mm-hmm. if they are to form the fist um, of the hand to be truly unstoppable, um, then yeah, they need Gao and they need her to uh, conform. That's very that's very true, and, and interestingly, that's very similar to what Colleen is saying to her students, isn't it? Where she's saying one single arrow can be broken, but a quiver full of arrows can't be, which is very similar to yeah the fist, effectively. So, how many have we seen? We've only seen Gao. Gao, three Nobu, so yeah. and um, and now Bakuto. Yeah, so okay. that's three. We can pretty much assume that Nobu will be back to a degree. I don't think we can assume that. I think we can assume that somebody else has taken power over okay. from headless Nobu yeah, <laughs> for his faction. Because he's had his, he's had his we can assume that he, off. We, we can assume that he was one faction. Okay, so so let's check. So we're still missing two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's still a high percentage that Sigourney may be like the. One of the others, Sigourney Weaver, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if she is going to be one of the others, or is she like and head honcho? Is yeah, she, is, is she, she the Pam? Yeah, is she the Pam? Yeah. Oh my mm-hmm. god, that'd be a great name. Okay. <laughs> the Pam of the hand. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Or she no the fist. We call herself the fist. Maybe because the like, the amount of jokes we, we can make that we whole do series. already we do already have a fist though. Which is the iron one, which we're talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Right but it's interesting that on the, the defenders, yeah, the yeah. fist is the collective where they bring all the warlords together. Yeah, okay. yeah. I should say I said five fingers. I should say four fingers and a thumb. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So, so, so. so who's the stubby thumb? Yeah. Adam Gow. That's why she feels so bad. Yeah, That's why it she's could so be. annoyed. Yeah, she's like, I'm the stubby, th- I'm the stubby thumb. Yeah. Just on this the, the, this conversation, mm-hmm. with Connie and Claire, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed. Claire's, I don't know, like her indignation almost. Yeah. Her, like yeah. It was just, the, again, I, I, felt I, very I, natural. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. I think that Absolutely. was the bit I liked. It's like she, you, you, again, it's the two actresses. I, I, I love both actresses in this mm-hmm. series. I think Claire has grown uh, as a character, and the actress was Aaron Dawson. It was obviously, she was an accomplished actor before. Oh, yeah. Actress, I should say, excuse me. Um, but now she's. I think with this kind of, she, we, I suppose once you play a character for so long, yeah. you can kind of understand it a bit more. Yeah. But I think Colleen Wings, as the character and the actress portraying her, mm-hmm. hasn't had that amount of time. But that brainwashed, um, fresh out of a, a cult kind of uh, portrayal is still good. It's great. No, I, I love Jessica Henwick in this role. And and that's what I kind of love about the conversation between her and Claire, and Danny to some extent, but particularly her and Claire, is that when Colleen's trying to say, no, no, don't worry, that they're, they're not a cult. They're, they, they just picked up loads of stray people who have no ties with anybody else in the world and then trained them and put them into positions of power. Oh, well, okay. And then Claire's kind of going, but that is that is a cult. That's <laughs> exactly what someone from a cult would say, isn't it? You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I love the kind of reaction of now Colleen being so lost in her life because she started out the series being so strong and so powerful um, and not having any questions or doubts over the backing of Bakuto, which we didn't know at the time, but she didn't have any doubts at all. Now that she's gone through this journey uh, with Danny and the realisation now that uh, Bakuto is willing to do anything to get what he wants, which is which means she has been part of a cult for years. And then the conversation with Danny on mm. the rooftop, yeah, heartbreaking. Like heartbreaking that that exactly that was the one for me that I think tug my heartstrings probably mm-hmm. the most across all the episodes of this season. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. It was just well written as even the one. Okay, we made the joke. I think it was in the previous episode. Uh, was it all about the fist? Mm-hmm. Kind of okay. Yes, they were trying to have that fight, but they. They kind of broke it slightly by having that joke in there. Right. They obviously noticed that to a degree and went, "Okay, well, let's let's ensure that this is actually a proper, almost like a couple fight, where they're one of them is so angry he's poking at the parts he knows is going to be painful. He's oh yeah. At the wound. Yeah, there's a proper breakup fight. Yeah, really. yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh. but then I actually did think that was the end. Mm-hmm. I think you discussed in the last episode where you, we saw her walking off into down in Chinatown mm-hmm. that could be the end of her arc yeah 
I think I thought at that breakup part in the conversation on the rooftop that was it. Right. I honestly thought they would just let her go, not tie up. I know it was weird, but I was like, let her go, not tie up her story, and then bring her back at a later stage. Mm. As she's she went off, did some soul searching. She comes back to Danny, a, 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 a mended woman. Yeah. If okay. You want to call it that. Yeah. But it was just great. And then when the the ending of this episode for me. That was amazing because I was like, "Oh no, they they've they they're they're fixing this relationship," and I'm putting my hand and apologizing to our listeners. I said in a previous episode, it would be terrible. They should not be able to fix this relationship. Mm-hmm. They won't just like break him up to bring him back because mm-hmm. Danny won't forgive her. But okay, I'm okay with her for him forgiving her now. Yeah, because the way that they've shown this this evolution of the embryonic stage of a relationship Mm -hmm. into the breaking of that relationship because of a deception, uh, the anger, and now the grief. And it's it's literally like the five stages of grief, actually. The grief of them understanding that, no, they need to be together. And I don't know, I didn't like the rain part. Oh, I, I, I thought that was just like ultimate like cheesy romantic no, I, I really com. liked that perfect no I <laughs> yeah. loved it I was like no Danny looked like a wet doggy yeah exactly <laughs> I thought it was really really good um, I, I kind of liked the build up to this because it was you know the, the thunder was rolling through yeah I liked exactly. the fact that you know she turns around to effectively hit him and, and knock him out she thinks it's probably one of the operatives um, from the hand um, and I like that the rain started to come down. Um, I think it added that, yeah, it was slightly cliche, but I kind of thought it felt right um, with it. It was kind of, you know, as the metaphor is that it's everything's been washed away and cleansed, mm-hmm. uh, all the bad stuff previously. So I kind of, I like that idea. Um, and, and I like the fact that, you know, this kind of makeup, or at least this this start uh, on, on that journey of of forgiving one another, uh, was witnessed by by Davos, and mm-hmm. you know, again, it just raises that question for him because he was saying earlier in the episode, you know, who was that woman who was escaping, uh, and he's told at the start she's no one. Yeah. By the end of the episode, they're embracing one another. You yeah. know. Um, relieved that they've been able to like sort it out in a sense although mm-hmm. for for colleen it, it's sorted out the clarity has come from the fact that she's been strapped already you know ready to be shrunk wrapped for revival yeah. again that's fairly brutal for for her and so to have danny there to kind of comfort her i yeah. thought was was really good but yeah no i kind of like the rain i thought it was yeah, all it was i thought it was cool I, I think i've just seen it too many times I, I think know, that was I know what you mean, but definitely. Now, I, I know where you're coming from, that yes, it washes away the sins, but so does a shower. <laughs> to me, they could... I, I don't think they're going to roll out a shower on that. No, no, but you, could, right but you could have had that scene in the shower. I'm not, I'm not sure whether... I'm it, sure you could, but... I doubt she'd be getting into the shower with him until he'd at least apologised for, yeah, for treating her the way she did. Anyway. Uh, hold on, hold on. He, she was in there, okay. But let's not take sides here, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, we've done gone through our four, four points, but I think there's one bit we want to... Yeah. We should chat about. Yeah. Danny still has a block on his cheek. Yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? it it's kind of like he, he did learn a bit from Bakuto about how to access his chi, um, at will, effectively, to calm himself uh, in the last episode. And now this episode, he's unable to break through uh, this barrier that's being caused by all the things that are going on around him. It does kind of feel like a block to his humanity, oh. um, which is what he needs to access the power, effectively. It's what, he, what Danny needs to, to access the chi, is to be able to suppress the feelings. But be, since he came to New York, there's been so much going on with him by meeting Colleen and obviously the Meachams and everything that's gone on there and everything that's happened with Bakuto and the hand that he's not able to suppress all of the things that are going on the way he was when he was just in Kunlun and just focused on his training. So, um, so yeah, we, we've spoken before about Danny being uh, very young to this. We learn in this episode that it's only about two weeks, really. I thought it might have been about six months, but it's only about two weeks since he got the power when he runs away from Kunlun. So, um, so he's not trained at all. And he's not able to suppress this and not able to access the chi at all. I think it's quite interesting now that he's not able to use the Iron Fist. We're, you know, 11 episodes into the season now. We're not able to see him use the power anymore. I'm in complete agreement with you on this. For one thing, though, when they 
did they had him on the table mm-hmm. uh, with Claire and she took that piece out of him. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh my yeah. God, I was right. They injected something and that was what was blocking his chi. Yeah. And then when he still couldn't, I was like, wow, okay, so no, it is this, yeah, this this level of untrained discipline. Yeah. But the the emotion tar- emotional torrent, mm-hmm. which is blocking him because he has to center himself in order. And I think you we can kind of we bring it up every now and again that he is most relaxed and most calm and most centered in the middle of a fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, that now kind of explains. He's been trained for 15 years as that when you're getting, to this extent, when you're getting beaten up, when you're in a moment where it's just focusing on the, the actual, your movements, mm-hmm. uh, then you are calm and centered. And then, but these emotions with Colleen, these emotions with Claire and Harold and Joy and Ward and Rand Enterprises and the discovery of the, the, the inside of his parents and the poisoning and yeah. everything we're seeing. Like, to be fair, that is a, a lot to... It's a lot to deal with. To deal with in what? So it's two weeks since he got the Iron Fist. Yeah. And probably a week since he's been back in New yeah. York. That's a shitty seven days, mm-hmm. to be fair. Yeah, he's completely effed up, as Claire might say. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking the one moment when you would actually want your chi to heal yourself... Um, he can't do it and instead has to get stapled back together. Oh, yeah. um, I was expecting like PVC glue, a bit of glitter as well to come out here. Um, <laughs> as Claire does, um, you know, a bit of a, a stationary patch up on, on Danny. I do like to, I do like that she says that the reason why she doesn't have many supplies yeah. is because, because uh, self sanctimonious heroes keep coming up, up to my Vigilantes. house, isn't it? Some, vigilantes yeah. keep coming yeah. to my house and looking for my help. Uh, that's a nice little call, I It yeah. is. Yeah. And and the thing that they pulled out, I was wondering, was it a tracker or yeah. just the end of whatever he stabbed I think him with? It's the end of an arrow, is what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, but yeah. I think it is just that. I, yeah. Because they just literally dropped it on the floor. Yeah, so. yeah I was expecting them to kind of cut to it, yeah. like glowing flashing or, or flashing. Yeah, exactly. But, but um, then that does also take away our theory of it being an extractor. Yeah, yeah. it, it does. Like really. It was just some form of. You break it, you you stab and you break it in. Yeah, into the person so that the the wound remains open yeah. or something like that. And it, yeah, I mean it wasn't a tracker because otherwise the hand would be all over that apartment like uh, like yeah. a rash. But don't um, worry, Davos has been sent out on patrol about six times know, in this poor episode. Davos. Poor Davos, like, could you just give us a minute uh, worth the perimeter? Uh, I've done it twice already. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was <laughs> That's cool. really good. But, um, I liked as well how when he was trying to recenter his chi on the roof, he he does that kind of snap out with his arms, and of course immediately. With the staples in his side, I yeah. thought that was a nice little touch. Um, I was wondering if it was just going to like ping, 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 and then you know, <laughs> next thing it's uh, it, it 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 sort of Ruptured bursts again. open. Yeah. But, but like, it'd be interesting to see will this get infected? I mean, you know, because there, there was kind of a play on the antibiotics, and I think primarily it's just to draw Colleen uh, into accessing one of the hand members at yeah. the hospital, yeah. and obviously that leads to to then. You know the the further storyline of her uh, back at the compound, but like, yeah, I I, I wondered whether something like that was going to happen, but I, I probably not. I think it's just a, a story device. I think I think case. yeah, I think so. So in terms of of Danny accessing his chi again, so I think Davos mentions this, taking him back to Kunlun to to a healer that will be able to help him. Uh, Bakuto has mentioned a couple of times that he can help him access his chi. Who will be able to do it? I presume Danny's not going to go back to Bakuto now. Uh, he doesn't want to go back to Kunlun. So do we think Danny's going to be able to get over this himself? Um, do you think it's with the help of Colleen, maybe, that he's that he's going to be able to centre himself and, and uh, relax his chi now that they're back together? I guess they're back together at the end of this episode. Um, yeah. So how is he going to get over this? Because he's going to have to. He's got two episodes left in the season, so he's going to have to be able to access his Iron Fist again, right? Mm, I'm not sure. I think this is, could potentially be the... like. Okay, maybe, yes... I think what we're saying is that his emotions, the emotional th- impact of everything is blocking him using the fist. Mm. So as they tie up each of the threads, maybe he can start to kind of 
he gets a flash. It's like, oh, he, okay, he figures he, he's back with Colleen and now he gets a flash on the fist. And mm-hmm. as he starts to center, like everything is no more motion. Focus but, on your happy place, Danny. Yeah, kind of like that. And you see him flash back to yeah. the golf course with uh, Happy Gilmore. Um, <laughs> that was what that sort of was Focus on your Danny place happy? Yeah, okay. I don't. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I like the idea of a, of a broken hero. Mm-hmm. And I do like that because he is insanely powerful. He can be. Yeah. He can yeah. Be. yeah. So having a fractured iron fist who can't always use his power is an interesting take on because we have Luke Cage who's so strong. He's he, he's he's un- unbreakable. He's the unbreakable man, mm-hmm. but he's broken inside. And now they have bullets that can break yeah, his skin. And, yeah. Yeah. His skin. Yeah. and then you have Jessica Jones, who is, again, quite strong, mm-hmm. but broken on the inside. Yeah. You have <laughs> Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock, who is just plain broken yeah. Uh, yeah. as a uh, hero. The Punisher I, broken Yeah, as Punisher well. broken. It, it, there's yeah. obviously, I, there's probably, I'm assuming there is thesis upon thesis on this, <laughs> on the, th- the theory behind the hero. Uh, the superhero the thesis. But yeah. just a few staples is all that's required. Yeah, it's yeah. true, apparently. <laughs> but I, I like the idea that it's just, you can have a broken Iron Fist going into Defenders. Okay, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen, but... Uh, of course but no, not, but good I opinion. Think, yeah. Good opinion. Um, I think it's time to get on to notes. That's our top five points for the episode. Uh, my first one, because I did have to question it, is Claire gives... A sweatshirt to Danny uh, from an, another hero that was in her house, someone kind of like him. Um, I was wondering, was it Matt's because it actually fit Danny? Uh, but it is Luke's because he puts his fingers through the bullet holes that are in that are in the top, and that can only be Luke Cage that had left behind a bullet hole ridden top, right? So it is. Yeah. Um, but I did expect it to be a lot bigger on Danny if it was Luke's <laughs> top. Like Luke is a giant of a guy in comparison to Danny's body type. We talked about it before, but there's no way that that. Is actually the stop, right? Well, well, you assume it's like it's potentially Luke Cage buys like two sizes too small, possibly so that he's like extra ripped. Possibly the bodybuilder yeah. thing, yeah. of course, of course. I was kind of just expecting that when Danny was doing his doing his his movements, his tai chi movements, that you know the the uh, the cuffs would be over his hands because they were too long or something. You know, <laughs> it would look like a dress. That'd be amazing. <laughs> but I wondered whether it was uh, Matt Murdock's from the the first season because doesn't Matt go to Claire's place? Like, does Luke? I can't. Luke does he because does. there's another okay. re- there's another reason for that. And was my other note that Claire's also given her car to a second defender because in Luke Cage oh, yes. yeah, they borrow uh, they borrow Claire's mom's car I think it is Soledad's car uh, in, in Luke Cage um, Misty Knight borrows it I think uh, so she gives it to another defender she is just the lender of cars and healer of wounds for the defenders <laughs> um, I like that nice uh, any other notes for the episode? Um, nothing really from my side this wasn't a particularly huge easter egg or no. I, I, I kept my aside from the, yes the, the car and the, the 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 t-shirt being predominantly uh-huh. um there wasn't very much oh my god look they're referencing the big green guy again yeah they they seem to have steered away from that now completely i'm very happy yes. yeah i'm very happy with that but they we do got your notes but i just have the the hints to share Leo, obviously and then obviously seeing kun lun which we mentioned in the episode absolutely so, yeah. quick question have we seen stan lee yet not that I can remember. No, not no. that I can remember. No. No, we, ha- we haven't been in the police station at all in the series. Uh, they are mentioning a little bit more that they want to take Bakuto to the police station, so maybe when they do arrest him, we'll yeah. see that photograph of Stan Lee. Yeah, I, I think, well, do you remember in Luke Cage, we got it as he that photograph is now being used as a outdoors yeah. kind of styled poster. It's like, the police need you. The police yeah. need you, or, hey, don't do that. Yep. I can't remember what it said. <laughs> Excelsior, <laughs> don't do that. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be probably outside the police station now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still haven't seen it, and it's kind of annoying me. I just want I want cop version of San Lee. So, do you know what? Remember that billboard where we saw where it was like ran weird, weird home for you? Yeah. It should have just actually had the a giant Stan Lee one, Stan Lee and it's just like pointing. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Absolutely, arrest your enemy and bring him to the police like you should be doing all along, War- uh, Harold. Yeah, <laughs> just like, like literally like pointing down. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my god, it's so meta. Um, but yeah, no, that's good. So on that point, Chris, do you defend this episode of Iron Fist? Yep. I'm not even gonna I'm gonna even like hold it in nope. and try and do anything 
funny about it. No. As the series goes on, aside from the, the, the Joy Harold relationship, which I'm still not buying, okay. and I, I, I'm sad by that. So they made me enjoy the family, enjoy the mediums as a as an who they are. Mm-hmm. They made me not care now. So I'm hoping as time goes on, well, over the next two episodes, right. that maybe yes, I do. They they kind of explain away a few things that I don't enjoy, and maybe bring it in, mm-hmm. but. At this point, that is the part where I'm not liking. I'm loving the extended creation of Davos. Right. That That's is, right. we are seeing the, the creation of Iron Fist's arch nemesis. Mm-hmm. And I'm enjoying that, seeing that downfall. But saying that, we could be all wrong. They may actually go, hey, yeah, you know how you thought this was going to happen? No. Yeah. And it could be, he, actually, he becomes best friends and they... In the next episode, they could hug it out. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, bro. No, you, bro. No, dude. No, dude. And it's like that with tears running down. Oh, that's how bad. I'm hoping not. Yeah, um, but then I did love... Okay, we had the origin of uh, Danny uh, with the, the Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, we didn't get the dragon, but that's fine. But I think it's more... We've seen Cullen. They're tying up the stories. There's still a lot of stories still left... Still left to tie up yeah yeah so two episodes there's a lot to do mm-hmm. so i'm 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 now buying in more i think where we're getting to should have happened a good bit earlier right right but hey okay these guys have done majority of these guys have done other episodes they wrote other episodes directly other episodes mm-hmm. the showrunner is a fantastic showrunner so let me stay with them like like I, I trust them with this. Mm-hmm. If they don't tie it all up, they will be getting a, a, an annoyed, angry <laughs> email. Like, how could you do this? <laughs> I'm sure people are doing it on Twitter and I just nah. stayed away from it. Forget about um, it. But anyway, yes, I do defend this episode. So, John, do you defend this episode of Iron Fist? I do. I'm delighted to say that on the 100th episode, I do defend this episode of Iron Fist. I give it a really solid uh, four tops off Danny with a side order of Madame Yoda uh, <laughs> out of five. I think um, I really loved um, Davos in, in this. I loved his portrayal and I loved the exploration of his kind of slight resentment towards Danny, sort of uh, coupled to, you know, just the hit the brotherhood and the the friendship that they have. I I liked how that that moved through this episode. Um, I predict bad times, uh, or sad times, in fact, for for the two of them. But I think that is a really nice way of setting up an antagonist that has deep emotional connections uh, to to Danny. And I really loved the, you know, how the this betrayal by Colleen uh, played out and, and that it it wasn't resolved till the end. And I love the fact that, you know, they layered on another betrayal here w- at the hands of Bakuto, who, um, along with Gao, I, I think I'm team hand, actually, in, in, in all of this. I <laughs> love their leaders. Um, right. I, I just think the the Machiavellianness, um, the smartness of them. And I think Bakuto is another one here who I am just absolutely uh, loving his duplicity. Mm-hmm. Um, really very good. I mean, he wasn't in it too much in this, but just the you know the crushing blow that he delivers to to Colleen uh, is, is fantastic. And I really did enjoy the the opening the at, in Kunlun towards the cave. I, I think, like Chris, I would have liked to to see the dragon or some hint of it even off screen. Uh, right, it would have been quite cool. We got a glimpse of Kunlun. Uh, hopefully, we get to see it in its entirety um, at some point. But again, we've only got two two episodes, mm. and Harold and Joy's relationship continues to to develop. Um, I, I think uh, you know, and we don't have Ward in this episode, so I presume he's still at uh, the hospital, yeah. going m- maybe more crazy. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the next episode now. So yes, I defend 
this episode of Iron Fist. And Derek, finally, on to you. Do you defend this episode of Iron Fist? No, I don't. It's a hundred, <laughs> hundredth episode. I've decided, no matter how good this episode was, I don't defend it because I defend all the time. Uh, no, no, of course I do. This is a, this was exactly the right kind of episode of Iron Fist. I'm loving these ones towards the end of the season and um, getting to see things like the actual past that we've talked about bunch, a bunch of times that there's been kind of casual mentions to getting flashbacks to something other than the plane crash for example uh is really exciting and really enjoyable to see having proper relationship uh discussions between colleen and and danny seeing a character like davos talk to a character like claire that we've known for years and she gets all the information out of davos great great moments really enjoyed it so yeah high a high defend i uh, wish more of the episodes early on in the season were like this one um which would would have made me much more excited for the show i think i think uh with that i think we have a little bit more feedback about this episode specifically we do we have some of our feedback over on facebook of course you can go and join us there join the community join in the chit chat the banter the discussions and the comments over at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash defenders tv podcast come over and join us there there's some feedback from uh, one of our uh, newer members of, of the group Conor and stevens mm-hmm. uh, i thought this was a pretty dang strong episode he says especially love the chemistry between davos and danny and the snippets we got of kun lun i honestly like this version of danny having left so quickly and not completely finished his training also that he didn't feel complete in kun lun mm. and search for a purpose uh, some of the scenes with claire didn't feel totally natural i i something about the script didn't always hit with me okay. um but the ending with colleen and the hand has me totally excited for the next episode uh absolutely i, I think it's not something we fully looked at but yeah that search for purpose that that idea um of feeling empty um obviously with the the death of of his folks yeah uh, but also that nothing f- came to fill that place uh, as much as he thought it might do in Kunlun. it was uh, a really good look at danny and i i would i think i agree with you i i like this version as well and i think um again i wish that had maybe been yeah. just revealed earlier in the the um in the series mm-hmm. because uh, it's made me much more invested in Danny now I think uh, is, is one of the big points of, of 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 that and to an extent where I was unsure what he was doing uh, and the purpose and this helps really invest in him much more Absolutely. but uh, thank you so much for that comment Conman definitely yeah cheers Conman um I, I'm in agreement with both of you, and I, I'm thinking Derek is too. Mm-hmm. This this version of Danny Rand that what we've been given is fantastic. I, I'm probably I, I I'm less less of a fan of the Iron Fist than John, and probably slightly more than Derek. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of in the middle, I'm just literally in the middle, like yeah. I am now, and when we're recording, uh, Piggy in the middle. So I love the the Immortal Iron Fist series uh-huh. that run. And I think that was that's as close as we're getting to this to the the Danny Rand that we're having on screen. Right. It, he is a broken man. He, his origin. I like this origin. Mm-hmm. It's slightly more fun than that of probably some of the the comics. Um, but they can wreck on those to be more in line with this. Yeah, I, point. I think it's definitely more up to date. I mean, the Living Weapon really that that series of, of comics really. Oh, I think it's. 2014 uh that explores the darker side of, of danny's yeah. psyche mm-hmm. um and i think maybe it's not as uh as like that uh in, in this it's kind of yeah. somewhere in between and, and i think they've struck a good balance yeah. uh definitely yeah. i mean living weapon one is more like punisher levels of yeah. darkness right. to some extent i'm kind of glad they didn't go that way yeah yeah, yeah. um the one thing conorman i will say don't you talk about my Claire like that? No, no. This is, she was fine. She's anything she does touches gold. Anyway, I think it's interesting. Definitely, I, I think they really gave Claire um, some good stuff to do in this, and I think it's for me. I really enjoyed her uh, in this episode, mm-hmm. mainly because I thought that she was becoming a bit. I don't want to use this word, but a bit cliche of jokey exposition uh, lady uh, in 
Basil exposition. Uh, yeah, like Basil exposition. Uh-huh. Um, like you know, it was kind of she had become very quippy, um, and that was fine to begin with. But it just started to maybe get drawn out a bit too much. And I think here, she was really f- properly involved in some really important stuff with yeah. Davos, yeah. and as well as patching up Danny. You know. Uh, and and I kind of like that. Uh, whereas a, I think a bit this season, I felt she's been inserted into the the series in a way that feels less natural. But yeah. um, I, I enjoyed her in this. I think episode. I think the good thing about that it led up to her being able to be used for this moment. Definitely. Thanks so much for that feedback, Conman. Really good to hear from you. Um, if you want to send a feedback to us, you can email us at feedback at defenderstvpodcast.com. We will be back on Friday, the 21st of April, with our review of the second last, the penultimate episode of Iron Fist, Bar the Big Boss. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. It literally will be all 101. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we have to say something about ourselves. Uh, interesting. Interesting. All yeah. 101. As a numbers guy, this is destroying me that our numbers are not aligned for every episode. Episode, episode 11 is our 100th episode, rather than our 101st it's getting really <laughs> yeah. but the we'll, LEDs we'll is flashing on his neck <laughs> but we'll fix it we'll fix it thank you so much for joining us for our 100th episode really good to have you and really good to be here all three of us in the same room thanks Absolutely. so much guys exactly. yeah guys thank you so much we're so glad that you've joined us for this journey every single one of you be that in the group be that just your listener mm-hmm. be that I don't know if this is your first episode welcome on board anything um, just to have you guys here have this feedback the community is absolutely amazing That I, I can't thank you enough absolutely really enjoyed doing this episode of Defenders TV podcast you know these things don't come around too often uh, thank you so much for all the voicemails and even for you know anyone else who hasn't sent in voicemails who who has joined the group um comments uh, on you know crazy posts that go up thank you so much for for listening uh, it, it is really appreciated and of course as always um thank you so much for joining us and i'll we'll speak with you next time absolutely what would you give our fellow defenders out of five john and now you've really put me on the spot. But I know it would be six out of five. I like it. Um, I like definitely. Spinal tap. This one goes <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six spinal taps <laughs> uh, out of five. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful way to end the show. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.